Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this video, uh, we are going to start building out our game screen manager, finally. So with that, uh, if you remember from the previous video, we set up our abstract screen and created the simple skeleton file of game screen subclassed from our abstract screen. And um, now we just have this game manager that really does nothing yet. So we're going to start writing out some of the basic logic to start just so we can get a screen implemented. Remember all those fancy features of transitions and whatnot we'll be covering later on because we just want our game set up and get our basic prototype going of uh, our Pong world and where ball bouncing around, paddle moving, that kind of thing. So uh, just a few notes real quick though, back to our application class, I made a few minor revisions. Um, if you'll notice in the create method, I have the batch and shape batch uh, both at the top. Now I realized when the game screen manager is set up, it is going to be using those sprite batches and uh, shape render batches right off the bat. And so if those are set up after our game screen manager, then we'll get a null pointer exception. So because these are kind of top level anyway, we might as well put them where they should be so we don't hit those null pointer exceptions. And also for the assets, uh, make sure that is initialized before the game screen manager also. Um, because we might have a load screen that will use the asset manager to uh, load our assets. And so that just needs to be done before we get into our game screen manager. Um, so just make sure the game screen manager is kind of like the last line in the create method because once that starts going off, it'll start firing off uh, stuff in this render code or it'll start setting screens and using the logic in those screens. So just kind of pay attention to the order you're doing stuff there. And then also in our dispose method, um, I added this super.dispose and that's because we extend the game class and uh, we need to make sure things are getting disposed right. I, I don't believe I had that in the previous video. So uh, just a small addition is all. Now back to our game screen manager. So we're going to use a pretty basic setup. A um, little different from some of my other videos that I have where I set up a game state manager where we had a stack of states. And uh, since we're dealing with screens, screens have their own kind of life cycle that, are, that they work with where they have like a hide and resume and um, pause and show that those kind of methods are the, the kind of their life cycle in a way uh, along with the dispose and whatnot and pretty much when you're working with screens you want to keep them active always uh, like or not that's not really the right word uh, you want to make sure that once you create them you just hang on to those instances so think of them like singletons where you have only one instance of them that's never destroyed until you're actually for sure done with it um, I mean, the loading screen might be one of those things where you dispose of it after you're done, but we're just going to hold on to everything at, at this point because our game is pretty small, so we don't have a lot of overhead at this uh, kind of to start with. So with our game screen manager, we, of course, need to have some screens to work with. And we did that in our previous video, setting up our abstract screen and subclassing it out to our game screen. So this is where we're going to do all our Pong playing and um, just pretty much the core game is going to be this class here. So because we have this empty skeleton game screen, uh, we can still use it to load as our first screen for our game screen manager to test that our game screen manager can at least set the screen to our application. So the first thing we probably want is a method to initialize all those game screens that I was talking about. So void uh, in it game game screens. Okay. And uh, another thing we'll need is how to reference those screens. So like, let's say a screen wants to change the current screen that's being displayed. It needs to tell the game state manager like, hey, can you please set up this real quick and uh, transition over for me? Um, so we're going to need a way to store those screens so we can keep references to them. So when we want to set a new screen, we can change it to that. But we also need to make sure that it's not very easy to just say whatever you want to change a screen. So like we don't want to be passing a string of text and then like using a switch case on that, uh, mostly because 
if we do that, and let's say there's like a typo in that string, then we probably aren't gonna get the screen we want because it won't recognize it in our switch statement. So we're gonna make it easy and use an enum. And pretty much what an enum is, is uh, it's just, a good description would be, it's like named numbers. Um, that's really the basic use of it. So like, let's say we have this enum. We are gonna make it public so other classes can see it. Uh, that way they can set the screen appropriately. So like, let's say I have this play uh, state in our enum and uh, I have like a main menu and maybe even like a settings. Okay, so with this enum, it pretty much is like enumerated values, but they're tagged with names. So this represents like one, or I'm sorry, zero in our state enum. This is one, and then this is two. And so you can kind of see how you can use that as a switch statement, but these are like defined names. And so that makes it easier to have expected values for what we're gonna be using for setting our screen. And that'll make sense once we get that set up a little bit more. Um, so we're just, you know, we're just gonna leave these in here. And what I like to do is kind of set up a like, order of the flow of our game in the, in the state, just so it looks nice. I don't know, you first get to the main menu, then you go to play, or you also have settings, that kind of thing, just uh, just to keep it organized. It doesn't really have to be, it doesn't matter what order it's in, because we're not gonna be really caring about the numbers they represent, more so just the names. Um, and the reason we care about those names is because we're also going to be using a hash map to store all our game states anytime we create them. So will use state. As you can see, I just called it state. I didn't put in any kind of data type. And that's the nice thing about enumerators. Like this becomes a sort of like class. Um, so we can just use it as, you know, like in hash maps, when you're doing your types, you can have it set here and instead of like string, you know, that kind of thing. And so we can also have a uh, abstract game or that's just abstract screen, yeah. Okay, so now we are saying map uh, each state to a abstract screen, and we gotta import that, so that didn't do what I wanted to do. Um, there we go. And then import hash map, and then we're gonna call this game screens. So this will be a map of game screens, and we can reference each screen by calling it uh, the, the state that we set it to be referenced by. And so now in our init game screens, now that we have a place to store our screens and a uh, enumerator of different states, we can just say this uh, game screens equals new map state abstract screen import map and why map is abstract oh i thought that, oh never mind sorry uh it should be hash map okay and then uh we need to initialize all our states that we currently have so uh because we only have our game screen right now uh we're just going to have this dot game screens dot put state dot play because that's the state we're assigning it to and then new game screen app. Okay, perfect. So then when we do make these new game screens in, in the screens, make sure in your create that you don't have anything that's like reference that needs to be initialized before, uh, like don't, don't have code in there that is using other things or like logic running in your create. All of the creation stuff should be in your show. So like when the screen is shown, it'll do stuff in here, or um, you just gotta be aware of like what's going on in here uh, when you first start and like understand what these methods are calling the order they're called in uh, for the life cycle of screen. And we'll talk more about that once we actually start getting into using our screen and um, caring about like screen switching so we can observe like when these methods are actually called in certain cases. So back to our uh, game screen manager, 
Um, we just want to get this set up right now, and then uh, later we can worry about uh, screen management stuff, uh, actually like switching screens. So because we're only going to be working in the play screen, uh, that's all we just need to care about right now. So um, now that we have that, we also need, like I mentioned, we need to be able to set the screen. So we need to have a uh, public method set screen and this is a method that should be accessed outside and um, this is pretty much like telling the game screen manager hey can you do this for me and the uh, to point out I'm gonna be using state as the argument or uh, the parameter that's going to be passed into this method and that because it's a like predefined states that allows us to restrict what other uh, screens or like what other classes can call because they're using the state class that's that or state enumerator that we have in here and so um, we'll have app dot set screen oh this is actually something else I forgot um, so we can just do this uh, game screens dot get next screen okay and so that'll set the screen that we want. And then we also want a dispose method. So when we're closing our game and our game's all over, um, we want to neatly clean up after ourselves. So we have a dispose method in our game state manager. And that's going to have the, uh, so for abstract screen, screen, game screens dot values because that's a collection of game or uh, of abstract screens and then for each one um, if the screen does not equal null like if it wasn't just or if it was disposed already or something uh, then we can do screen dot dispose okay so there we go cleaning up after ourselves perfect so now that we have all that figured out um, yeah, I believe uh, I believe we're pretty good to go so far. So uh, we in our creation or our I'm sorry constructor, we can just have in it game screens. So we call this method set our screens up, and then we set the screen to our starting screen that we want. And because we are only going to be working in the play screen for now, we are setting our screen to the play screen. So now. Uh, as you remember, when I first, uh, if actually when I loaded it up, it should be black. Um, but we're going to make, yeah, it should be black. So uh, that's what I've set the GL clear color to be. And so if I run it now, the game state manager gets created. It sets up its game screens, and then it sets the application screen to the play screen and so now we have a black screen and that's just what we're looking for and you'll see if I change this to like let's say 0.25 and if I run it now you'll see now we have a slightly redder version and that is because we set our game screen manager to load this screen up and because all the screens use a 0.25 red value for their uh, clear color. That's why we saw it. And so that means we're successfully loading up and setting our first screen of our game. And that's just what we want. Um, so if you remember, I did add this dispose method. So we need to come back to our application and go to the bottom of our dispose method and make sure to dispose of our game state or our game screen manager. So it disposes of all the screens that it has that it's holding on to. So with that, um, I hope that was a good kind of introduction to how we're starting our game screen manager. Pretty straightforward overall because we have this hash map that kind of just hangs on to everything for us and we use an enumerator to set everything up and restrict the values we take in. So with that, uh, like, comment, subscribe as usual and I'll see you guys next time where we will be starting to dig into the game screen itself and we'll be introducing our Box2D world. So, thank you.